Hi, welcome to the Enterprise 2.0 Workbench, episode 12. My name is John Brunswick, and today we're going to be using Web Center Portal to deliver personalized content to our end users. Whether you're using the portal for an intranet or an extranet, providing highly contextual, relevant content to end users is critical in providing a great experience. We're going to do this using Content Presenter and using a Seamus query to pull back relevant content to display through Content Presenter. Within this Seamus query, we're actually going to make use of the Web Center Portal User Profile, which is reaching back into LDAP to pull back attributes for that given user. This allows us on the portal side to build this framework and then allow business users not to worry about technical minutia, but to work within Content Server to organize and tag content appropriately. Let's take a look from an end user standpoint and then dive behind the scenes to take a look at how the technology makes this work. So the first thing we'll do is look at the experience from the standpoint of an end user. Let's go ahead and open our browser. And I'm going to go over and head to our portal. So the portal example that we have here is using the Twitter bootstrap sample as the UI foundation but that really doesn't play a role in how we actually interact with it. So it's just there for aesthetic purposes. We have two users that we're gonna demonstrate with, one being Larry, who's part of the sales group, and the other being Julia, who's part of a marketing group. So if I go ahead and log in as Larry, once we authenticate, we're presented with a content tab. And so I'm gonna click on the content tab and if I scroll down, you'll see that I'm presented with two documents in the middle of the page here in our sample content area. You'll also see that I'm actually seeing the user description and seeing the user department. Now, those two pieces of information are coming from our Web Center user profile. And the values for those settings are actually coming from the embedded LDAP server in the WebLogic instance within JDeveloper. Scrolling down a little bit further into the page, we can see here two documents, Sales for Social Media, as well as YouTube Posting Directions. Now, both of these are being presented to us because they have in some way been tagged as being targeted towards sales. And we can see here that our user department is in fact sales, and that's why we're getting these documents. Let's go ahead and we're going to log in again. And we're going to log in as Julia. And we're going to head over to the exact same page that we were on before, the content page. But now we see two different documents. We see Marketing Top Trends 2013. We also see Social Media Statistics. And in the upper right hand corner of the page, we see our user description is that we're a marketing specialist and we're actually within the marketing department. Now, again, we're getting this from the Web Center user profile and in the middle of the page here, that's actually just standard content presenter, but it's being filtered using a Seamus query that's taking into consideration the user profile. So if we start to peel back the layers and look behind the scenes a little bit, we'll go ahead and log into our local WebLogic server. Now this is the embedded WebLogic server with JDeveloper. And if we go into Security Realms, My Realm, Users and Groups, we start to see the users that are part of the embedded LDAP server within our WebLogic instance. And so we can see here Julia, and we can see here Larry. And these are the descriptions of the two users that we were seeing a moment ago. And if we click on Larry for a second and go to Attributes, we'll see in fact that his department number has been set up as Sales. And for Julia, it's been set up as Marketing. So these were actually the values that we're getting merged in with our Seamus query, returning the appropriate content for that user. So a couple 
couple notes as we start to again go back into the details. The way in which we're actually targeting the information has to do with how documents are actually tagged within the content system. And so we're going to log into the content system here. And if we just pull back the latest documents, we'll see toward the top, we have our sample documents that we've been working with. So for instance, if we take a look at sales for social media and scroll down, we can see here that the document's just been tagged with the word sales. Now this is a trivial example. And if we wanted to, we can go in and um, edit the metadata for this particular do uh, content item. We could go in and change the tags. But we could also have these tags powered through drop-down and select lists. We could have them inherited based on where the content item was residing. If it was within a particular folder, we might want to automatically tag it. This makes it very easy for business users to drag and drop content items into the system, and they're automatically going to get tagged. And then by virtue of what we do with Content Presenter, they'll only be shown to certain individuals when they're browsing the portal. Now, when we're working within the portal environment, and taking a look again at the portal with Julia logged in, looking at some of these marketing documents. Let's look at how we're actually getting these specific documents into the page. I'm going to minimize the browser and head over to JDeveloper. Now again, all the sample code here is available within this particular screencast. But what's really material here is that when we drill into our portal application and take a look at our pages, now again, keep in mind these are just examples and you might want to implement things differently. Um, if we just look at our sample page, and right now we're looking at titletest.jspx, what we'll notice is that we just have a region that is leveraging the document library content presenter. And the way in which we were able to get this into a particular JSPX page, when we set up our portal application, there are two key things that we need to do here. One, we obviously need a content repository. And here, what we were able to do is simply find a particular area within the system, drag and drop it into the UI, and we could just create our default content presenter. And we'll get into these settings in just a moment here. So that's actually what we did to create what we demonstrated a moment ago. What we also have to do, though, is to get any additional information about our Web Center user besides just their login name and other trivial information in order to get the department and deeper levels of information about the user, we actually need to set up a connection to a Web Center portal database. And in the accompanying blog post, I have details around setting that up using a creation utility to build that database. What we've done here, I'm just using the Express edition of the Oracle database. I'm running it locally, and I've gone ahead and run the creation script. And again, there are some caveats to that, and they're in the accompanying blog post with this. So once I have these two things set up in the application resources, I'm then able to drag and drop, as we did a moment ago, the document library content presenter. And once I've done that, if I select that row and go to the bindings tab, you'll see the list of parameters that we saw earlier when we just simply dragged and dropped the content presenter onto the page. We have to do two things here. In order to use the CMS query, we need to set the data source type to DS type query expression just as we have here. Then what we're able to do is set the data source as we've done here. And I'm going to actually just uh, copy and paste this 
into a different window to give us a better view here. And what happens, so CMS is very much like writing SQL against a relational database that adheres to the SQL standards. Here we're doing a select all and we're grabbing any sort of document. So we could go against different document profiles, etc. And where we're doing the filtering is on the tags specifically. So anytime you have a particular attribute that's a non-standard attribute, it's generally prefaced with an X and then the name of your attribute. And here is where we're making use of the user profile. So there are a couple points to note here, and again, this will be this is spelled out in the accompanying blog post. Use a lowercase w when we use the Web Center profile object. And what we're doing here is we're just pulling the particular title, which ends up equating to the department. So basically we're saying grab everything from the content system where this user is part of a particular department. So between the CMS query, setting the data source type, setting up our content repository, and our database, we're able to very easily create the ability to deliver personalized content based on the user profile. Now, it's important to point out that the data source type query is also available to be used within Web Center Spaces. So we could do the same thing with the CMS query as well as the, um, the user profile information in Spaces. This just happens to be a Web Center portal application that we're showing for demonstration. So I hope that this has been helpful and I hope it creates at least a basic foundation to start thinking about how you can drive personalization within your own Web Center projects.